In this video, we're going to talk about things called um, components or components of vectors. And you're going to be introduced to two different types of components. One's called a vector component, and the other one's called a scalar component. So you'll learn how to visualize the vector component and how to calculate both the vector and the scalar component. And you'll be using the dot product in order to get these vector components. So let's talk about what do I mean when I say component. Um, I'm going to focus on vector components right now. A vector component it, it's a vector and it describes the projection of another vector along a particular direction of interest. So it really helps to kind of visualize this. So kind of I'll, I'll give you an example to help us understand how to do this. You can follow these steps to help yourself visualize the vector component of a particular vector along the direction of another vector. So let's take these two vectors here. This is vector f and vector m. And our goal in this example is to draw the vector component of f along the direction of m. So vector m defines a particular direction. And I want to draw a line through vector m that would then help my eye visualize that direction. So this dotted line, anything that goes along that line, that is on the direction of m. So to help us visualize the component of f, that lies along this line, we're going to draw another line that's perpendicular to this line. I'm going to draw that line at the tip of F. And now I want you to take out an imaginary flashlight and we're going to shine that on vector F and we're going to visualize this shadow that would show up along this direction of interest. So we take out our flashlight and whatever shows up along this line, that is the vector component of F along this direction of M. And so if we did that, um, the shadow that would show up would lie along that direction of M and it would have a length that goes from the tip of vector F, sorry, from the tail of vector F um, along that direction. And it would end right here at where that, that um, perpendicular line intersects our direction of interest. And so that's how you know how to draw the vector component if you draw these two lines. One's parallel to the direction of interest and one is perpendicular to the direction of interest. And one goes at the tail of your vector and the other one goes at the tip of the vector. And that helps you visualize this shadow or this projection that would emerge if you shined an imaginary flashlight on this vector. So in order to actually calculate the vector component though, we're going to use the dot product. So if I tell you to determine the vector component of, let's say in this case, vector f along the direction of vector m, what you're going to do is you're going to take the dot product between vector f and the unit vector that describes the direction of vector m. So notice here that to calculate this vector component, you're doing the dot product between the vector of interest, so in this case, vector f, you're dotting it with the unit vector that describes the particular direction of interest. So in this case, unit vector m is going to point in the same direction as vector m. I don't really know the norms of these vectors, so I'm just guessing that um, vector m has a, a norm bigger than one. So, but it doesn't matter because unit vector m, we know for sure, has a norm of the number one, and it points in the exact same direction as vector m. So if that helps you remember, if you're trying to calculate the vector component of a particular vector along the direction of another vector, that word the direction of should kind of highlight in your mind unit vector. Unit vectors point in directions of interest. So make sure you're dotting vector f with the unit vector that defines that direction. And then you take the result of that dot product and you multiply by, again, this unit vector that defines the direction of interest. So if you're going to do that dot product, um, you guys have learned dot products. It takes the norm of the first vector times the norm of the second vector times the cosine of the smallest angle between them. So that's the norm of vector f, the norm of unit vector m, and then the cosine of this angle theta that I defined here in the picture. And then after you calculate that dot product, remember you still have another m hat out here. That's what's giving this component its vector nature. If we didn't have that m hat out there, then all we would be calculating is a scalar. 
So if you simplify everything, know, remember that every unit vector has a norm of the number one. And so that's how we get to our final answer. This is the most simplest form of our um, expression here. That right there, that is the vector component of F along the direction of M. So you'll notice here that I told you that there are two different types of components. We've been drawing and calculating vector components, but very closely related to that is something called a scalar component. Scalars are numbers, vectors are vectors that can be drawn like an arrow, where the length of the vector represents a magnitude and how the arrow is pointing represents the direction of the vector. So a scalar component, it's just a number, and a vector component is a vector. So that number, the scalar component, it can be any number. It can be positive, it can be negative, or it could be zero if the scalar component like doesn't exist, if there is no projection of the vector along that direction of interest. The vector component, it's a vector, so you're gonna be able to draw it as an arrow, and it has to lie along the direction of interest. If it's not lying along the direction of interest, you have messed up. And this vector component, it can point in the same direction as the unit vector that you defined to describe that direction, or it could point opposite to that unit vector, or it could just not exist. It could be the zero vector if the vector has no component um, along that direction of interest. So this expression that you guys saw on the last slide, this is the for the vector component of vector f along the direction of vector m. So again, that the direction of m, that is defined by unit vector m hat. So that's why we're dotting f with unit vector m hat. And then we're multiplying it again by m hat so that this, the answer is going to lie along that direction of interest. So all of that, that is the vector component of f along the direction of m. But the stuff there in the parentheses, that dot product, that is actually the scalar component of vector f along the direction of m. So the result of that dot product, we know that dot products give us scalars. They can be positive, negative, or zero. So the result of that dot product is just a number, and that is the scalar component of f in the direction of m. So if you want to get the vector component, you're really finding the scalar component first, and then you're multiplying that scalar component by the unit vector that you use to describe the direction of interest. So this is how to calculate scalar components. Use those to then construct vector components. So let's go back to our example here um, of vector m and vector f. And we're trying to calculate, we already know what the answer is. We can visualize it using these lines that we drew. We drew that vector component of f along the direction of m. And we already did the math. We showed the expression to calculate the actual um, vector component of f along the direction of m. Let's double check to see if this expression makes sense um, with the picture that we drew. Notice that our final expression here is the norm of f times the cosine of theta times unit vector m hat. We know that m hat would point in the same direction as m. It would just do so with a norm of the number one. Um, our vector component here, that green arrow, notice how it's pointing opposite to m hat. And that makes sense with our expression because the cosine of theta, look at theta. Theta is an angle bigger than 90 degrees. And so the cosine of that angle is going to be a negative number. And so this is good. This, this makes sense with our picture and our expression that that stuff um, in the brackets there, the norm of f times cosine theta, that's going to give us a negative number. We're going to multiply that number by m hat, and that'll allow us to draw this vector component of f along the direction of m. It's going to point exactly opposite to m, and it's going to do so with whatever this number ends up being, the norm of f times the cosine of theta. If I had asked you for the scalar component of f along the direction of m, now I'm just asking you for that number, the result of that dot product between vector f and vector m hat. So we use these components a lot, and so sometimes it's helpful to have an abbreviation um, instead of having to write out the words vector component of f along direction of. And so an abbreviation that you might use, let's take the scalar component first, is that um, if, we, if we know the scalar component of vector f along the direction of vector m can be written as this dot product of vector f dotted with m hat, 
instead of even writing that, so instead of writing the words, you could write this instead, vector f dot m hat. That communicates to me scalar component of f and direction of m. You could also use this abbreviation here, where you take the name of the vector whose component you're looking for, and you give it a subscript that describes the direction of interest. Remember, this is the scalar component, so there should not be a vector arrow symbol on top of the name of vector f. And so capital F with a subscript of m, that communicates to me, I'm looking at vector f, and it's the component of f in the direction of m. And because there's no vector symbol on here, I know I'm looking for the, or I'm going to get information about the scalar component of f in the direction of m. We also have um, abbreviations for the vector component of a vector along a direction of interest. So again, if you were looking for the vector component of f along the direction of m, you would take that scalar component and then you would multiply it by the unit vector m hat. So instead of writing out those words, you could use this mathematical notation here. So stop in parentheses, vector f dot m hat, and all of that is multiplied by m hat. That communicates to me scalar component of f in direction of m. You could also use this abbreviation. Notice that it's very similar to the other one, but now it has that vector symbol, that arrow on top of it. Now I know this is the vector component of f in the direction of m. So if you want to use these um, symbols, you can just be really careful that if you're talking about a scalar component, there is no arrow on top of your symbol. If you're talking about the vector component, now you need to put the arrow on top of there. If you don't, then you might be equating a scalar to a vector or vice versa, and we know that that doesn't make any sense. So if you want to use these um, notations, you can. I think most of the time I want to be explicit, so I might just use the mathematical notation here, or I might write it out in words just to make sure that you know what I'm talking about. All right, so let's use what we learned here and try to apply it to an example. We have a problem um, where we have a kite flying in the sky. It has a velocity vector v. We know the norm of v is 2.76 meters per second. There's many things acting on it. Wind is blowing on the kite. The string is pulling on the kite. There's the gravitational field of Earth pulling down on the kite. Um, and so all due to all of this, the kite is going to experience an acceleration. And that acceleration um, is symbolized by a vector A. And it has a norm of 7.75 meters per second squared. So you can kind of see the picture here. You can visualize vector V and vector A. And our goals in this problem are to determine the vector component of the velocity vector along the direction of the acceleration vector. And then we're going to determine the vector component of the acceleration vector along the direction of the velocity vector. So I would advise you to pause this video right here and try to see if you can do this stuff on your own without looking at the answers or watching the video solution. And then come back once you have um, your answers or once you've figured out where you got stuck then you can come back and kind of get some hints in the video. So give yourself a chance to give, a, give this a try. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to at least write the expressions um, for each of these things. So if I wanted to find the vector component of V along the direction of A, then I know that I'm going to do the dot product between vector V and unit vector A, and I'm going to multiply that result by unit vector A. So doing that dot product would result in the norm of vector v times the norm of unit vector a times the cosine of the smallest angle between them. And then all of that stuff gets multiplied again by unit vector a. Likewise, I'm just going to set up the expression here. The vector component of vector a along the direction of vector v, that will be symbolized by vector a getting dotted with unit vector v. And then that result is then multiplied by unit vector v. And so again, to do the dot product, I'd have the norm of the first vector, norm of the second vector, cosine of the smallest angle between them. So I have these expressions set up. Now I need to figure out um, what are these unit vectors? What are the angles between them? We need, in order to do these dot products, we need to figure out what that angle theta is. So remember, the unit vectors are going to point in the exact same direction as the vector um, that they're describing. So it has a different norm. It has a norm exactly equal to the number one, and it points along the exact same direction as the vector. So I can visualize um, v hat and a hat. 
And now I'm going to kind of draw these vectors tail to tail because I know when I'm doing um, dot products, I need the angle, um, the smallest angle between the two vectors when they are dotted, or sorry, when they are placed tail to tail. So this is that angle theta right here. Um, so to actually calculate theta, it'll be this little piece of the angle right here. That's 20 degrees because it's the complement of 70. Then I have another 90 degrees right there. And then I have this angle right here. That's another 40 degrees because it's the complement of 50 degrees. So if you add up 20 plus 90 plus 40, you'll get 150. And so that's what I'm going to input here to actually crunch some numbers and get an answer for this vector component of V along the direction of A. And so I get negative 2.39 meters per second times a hat. That's the vector component. If I had just asked for the scalar component, then there would be no a hat on there. It would just be that number, negative 2.39. And our symbol would not have a little arrow on top of it. All right, now let's do the um, vector component of a along the direction of v. I plug in again the norm of a. The cosine of the smallest angle again is, uh, is again 150. That angle is common because that's the angle between um, the vector v and unit vector a or vector a and unit vector v. And so on this one I get my answer there and notice again it's the vector component um, and it has like it makes sense I have a vector component a, a with a subscript of v and it has a vector symbol on top and then it's set equal to some number times a unit vector so that expression is a vector. So now I have my answers here. I want to make sure we can visualize this because it's one thing to get the numbers, but I want to make sure that you can understand what, what those expressions mean. So I'm going to take our answers here. We have our, our two expressions for these vector components of V in the direction of A and the vector component of A in the direction of V. I've redrawn our two vectors tail, tail, tail to tail again. And now I want to visualize this. So let's focus on visualizing the vector component of V along the direction of A. So let's draw our dotted line that defines that direction of A. Then I'm going to draw the other line that's perpendicular to the direction of A. And this vector component, V sub A, it's going to lie along that direction and it's going to start from the tail of V and it's going to go to the intersection of those two lines, the line that was parallel to the direction of interest and the one that was perpendicular to the direction of interest. And again, let's look at this expression. Does it make sense with the vector that we just drew? This number, negative 2.39 meters per second, that's a scalar and it's a negative scalar. So we know that this vector component V sub A is going to point opposite to A hat, which makes sense. Our vector component is pointing in the opposite direction um, as vector A and unit vector A. All right, now let's um, try to visualize the vector component of A along the direction of V. So now I've defined that direction of interest as going parallel, it's going through vector V. I draw my other line that's perpendicular to the direction of interest and I draw that one at the tip of the vector we're finding the component of. And there we go, that's the vector component of A along the direction of V. And again, let's see if it makes any sense. Um, that scalar component is negative 6.71 meters per second squared. So a negative number that tells me that this vector component should be opposite to V hat, which makes sense. This vector component is exactly opposite to vector V, which would have the same direction as V hat. So I think, yes, we did get our answers correct. And now I can actually visualize them. And it, it makes sense to me um, what these things actually represent. So you might be asking, well, why do we have to do this? Why do we care about components of vectors along particular directions? Well, it does make our lives easier um, when we are eventually going to be trying to put our vectors in what's called component form. It's going to help us write our um, vectors as mathematical expressions, and it's going to it's going to make our lives easier. And so instead of always having to draw our vectors and like draw resultants and try to be really exact with multiplying them by scalars, if we find the components of vectors along particular directions of interest, it's going to help us with the math later on, and it's going to help us get um, very exact answers instead of just our best, best guesses or best efforts at drawing these vectors to scale. So we will use this very soon when we're trying to calculate um, the components of vectors, and we're going to be doing this um, in the Cartesian coordinate system.